Well, on to politics now. President Trump's former personal attorney, Michael Cohen, is back on Capitol Hill today. He's continuing his testimony before the House Intelligence Committee in a closed-door meeting. And this comes as House Democrats are ramping up investigations into the Trump White House and the 2016 campaign. The Democratic-led panel is one of eight congressional committees that are just looking at the president or his associates. Today, White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders slammed the investigations. They know what they're doing is absurd and outrageous. They got beat in 2016 because they have no message. They continue to be a uh, group that is totally taken by a small, radical, leftist fringe of their party, and they're completely controlled by it. They know that's not enough uh, to beat this president, so they're going to look for other ways to do that. And um, it's sad that that's the path Sarah, they've chosen. Sarah. CBS News Washington correspondent Paula Reed is at the White House and Politico congressional reporter Sarah Ferris is on Capitol Hill. Sarah, let's start with you. Do you know what the line of questioning will be today behind closed doors for Michael Cohen? So we don't know exactly what he'll be asked, but there is plenty of material after his uh, public uh, testimony last week that lasted about seven hours and provided about six months worth of lead for House Democrats. They want to ask him everything from uh, what happened at that Trump Tower meeting, what do they know about the conversations about WikiLeaks, how close has the president been in touch with Roger Stone ahead of that WikiLeaks dump, uh, what, and there, there's dozens of other uh, potential investigations that they could be asking him about. The House Intelligence Chairman Adam Schiff has not revealed exactly what he'll say. This is a private private meeting, of course, uh, but there's a, there's a chance that Democrats uh, will be starting to speak about this over the next couple of days, so some of the information in the meeting could be starting to trickle out. And Paula, when it comes to the documents that have been requested by Chairman Nadler, is the White House cooperating? Well, they've confirmed they have received that request, and I'm told that they know some of these requests are just not realistic, and they've been put forth intentionally so that the White House will have to decline them, and then House Democrats can accuse the Trump administration of obstruction. So what they're trying to do is make accommodations. There may be certain requests where they can be described over the phone, or in certain instances, perhaps some lawmakers could come to the White House and review materials in person. But there may be some items where the president wants to assert his executive privilege. And in that case, as a last resort, they will take those items to the president and ask him, would you like to assert privilege over this? But if he decides uh, to use executive privilege to shield any of these requests, that is almost certain to set off a legal fight. So this morning, we know that Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, who promised to impeach the president, announced that she will introduce a House resolution calling for impeachment. Sarah. Is there support for this among Democrats on Capitol Hill? There is support from some Democrats. In fact, uh, Congresswoman Tlaib is not the first Democrat to introduce a similar resolution. That was actually done by Congressman Green of Texas earlier this year. But Congresswoman Tlaib's uh, interest in this and her passion in doing this, she's made clear uh, through some viral comments that, that she does intend to pursue impeachment against President Trump. This is not an, a comment. This is not a, a, a sentiment that's echoed widely in the Democratic caucus. And that's in large part because House Democrats are waiting for special Counselor Robert, Robert Mueller. They are pursuing their own strands of investigations. They will be having their own hearings, but they're largely waiting to see what the Mueller investigation puts forward before they make any kind of comments on this uh, very political firestorm involving impeachment. And Paul, we know today White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders lashed out at Republican senators who plan to oppose the president for declaring a national emergency to go around Congress to build his border wall. I'm going to play a, a bite for you. If Congress didn't want him to declare a national emergency, they should have done their jobs and actually fixed the problem instead of just denying that it exists. Uh, look, my message to, to that group is to do your job. If you had done what you were elected to do on the front end, then the president wouldn't have to fix this problem on his own through a national emergency. The president has the absolute authority. In fact, he has a duty to call a national emergency to fix the crisis that we have going on at our border. As doesn't this test Republican unity at this point? It does, and this is what Republican leaders fear, that the president would pursue this route, and then House Democrats would force a vote on this, and then Senate Republicans would be forced to, to choose between try, appearing to oppose one of the president's signature campaign promises or endorsing a way of policymaking through executive action that they had vilified former President Obama for. So it's not that they're opposing the idea of a wall, it's that they're opposing this idea of using executive action to implement immigration policy.
Sarah, I want to play a little bit for you from Senator Mike Braun. He was on Red and Blue yesterday. He said he'll support the president, but he did admit it causes him some heartache. I don't like the idea of when any one of our branches would get too declarative or out there. So the emergency, you know, I think it's, it's an emergency. Using it as a declaration here, I had a little heartburn with it, but I'm going to be with the president to do it. So, Sarah, Braun isn't up for re-election in 2020, but there are other Republicans who are. What position does this issue put all of them in? Well, we just saw Senator Tom Tillis of North Carolina, one of the more vulnerable Republicans in the 2020 election. He has said that he will vote to, to uh, revoke the national emergency. He will vote against President Trump on this. He's one of four Republicans who said that they would take this position, which is the, the number that they need to send this to President Trump, to President Trump's desk, if all else remains the same. So unless we see any kind of last minute changes from any Democratic senators, it does like, look like this will land on President Trump's desk. The big question is whether there will be a flood of additional Republican senators. Uh, Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky said there could be 10 more who vote against the president on this. Rand Paul is another one of those who plans to vote against this. Uh, or will we just see a couple, uh, a handful of Republicans who, who decide to go against Trump on this? In the House, we only saw 13 Republicans break rank. Uh, so it's a big question of how many we'll see and whether President Trump chooses to respond in, in of course, he will veto this, but how will he respond beyond that? And will he take out his anger on Twitter, will he take it out with any of the other members of his party on this? Sarah Ferris and our very own Paula Reed, thank you both for joining us.